Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Moving Against Cancer, Survivorship Support Groups and Resources. Uh, this webinar is being hosted by the Asian and Pacific Islander American Health Forum, the Health Forum for short, and the Asian and Pacific Islander National Cancer Survivors Network. My name is Trish Kema, and I am with the Chronic Diseases Program here at the Health Forum, and I will be your facilitator today. Um, before we begin, I want to briefly cover some instructions on how to ask questions through GoToWebinar. On your screen, you should be able to see the control panel on the right side of your desktop. And after approximately 10 seconds, the control panel um, automatically collapses to the right side of your screen with only the grab tab displayed. You can use the um, red arrow at the very top of the grab, of, of the grab tab um, to open or close your control panel. You can also use the question pane at the very bottom. Um, this is the one highlighted in red. And to ask us and the presenters any questions that you may have. We will be collecting your questions throughout the presentation, and we will have time um, at the end um, for any um, questions that you may have. Finally, we will be recording this webinar and we will be uploading um, our webinar onto our YouTube page. It's, um, and I'll sh um, share with you the um, link later. It's youtube.com um, slash APIAHS. But for those of you who would also like um, copies of today's presentation, um, please type in your email address on the questions pane, and I'll make sure to send you um, a copy of those presentations. So that's all I have for housekeeping items. Um, again, this webinar is being hosted by the Asian and Pacific Islander American Health Forum and the Asian and Pacific Islander National Cancer Survivors Network. We are a 25-year-old organization um, based here in San Francisco, California, which influences um, policy, strengthens organizations and their communities in order to mobilize Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders to advocate for their health and well-being. Um, apart from our headquarters here in San Francisco, we also have a Washington, D.C. policy office, and we have many, many relationships with community-based organizations from around the nation. Um, we, um, some of our partners will be presenting today for our webinar. The Asian and Pacific Islander National Cancer Survivors Network is a network of cancer survivors, their family members, healthcare providers, researchers, health advocates, community members, and organizations who are concerned about the issue of cancer and survivorship in the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander community. The role of our network is to support and build capacity in cancer control, which includes prevention, education, screening, treatment, and survivorship, um, cancer control systems, and for um, everybody to be engaged in the larger Asian American and Na Na Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander health movement and policy agenda. We currently have about 560 individual and organizational members nationwide, and we, I would really like to encourage all of you to join the network. It's very easy. Um, it's a very short form, and if you're not yet a member, please visit the website below, apihf.org slash apincsn slash membership. So um, wait, hold on. Um, the Health Forum is a um, current grantee of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and we will share information on um, um, our webinar today, which is um, focused on sharing culturally and linguistically, um, um, you know, can, uh, information on, on cancer support groups and the importance of the, and the role of cancer support groups in addressing um, disparities among uh, many communities, one being the Asian American community in Massachusetts. We'll also share um, best practices shared um, from our partners today. And we will highlight local, uh, the local cancer community-based organizations and initiatives in Massachusetts. So our hope today is for um, 
all our participants to get an increased um, knowledge and understanding of the important role of cancer support groups and of um, being able and uh, the role that we play in addressing um, health disparities that impact cancer prevention, screening, treatment, and survivorship. So we are very fortunate to have um, amazing, amazing speakers joining us today and lead us through this inform, um, informative session. We have um, four speakers today, and with that said, I would like to turn over the presentation to Pedro Arista, who is the Chronic Diseases Manager here at the Asian and Pacific Islander American Health Forum. Pedro? Thank you, Trish. Um, uh, and good morning or good afternoon to everyone, depending where you are. Um, and as Trish mentioned, my name is Pedro Arista, and I am the Chronic Diseases Program Manager here at the Asian Pacific Islander American Health Forum. Um, I work with uh, Trish and um, our uh, National Dir uh, Development Director to support the work in, of the Asian uh, Pacific Islander National Cancer Survivors Network. Um, my goal with um, uh, sharing some information today here is specifically to focus on trends um, nationally and also focus specifically on some information as it relates to cancer trends in the Massachusetts area specifically looking at Asian Americans and Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders and briefly, briefly highlight some disparities as it relates to cancer. Next slide. Next slide. Perfect, thank you. Um, as we can see um, in the U uh, U.S. Census um, information from 2000 to 2010, Asian Americans and Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders, both groups are uh, emerging populations in the country. We can see um, in 10 years among Asian Americans, we can see an increase of 46% in the population in the U.S. In addition, Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders, we can see an increase of 40% in uh, 10 years. The top three states that we're seeing, according to the census, um, uh, that we see with the highest um, emerging uh, groups of Asian Americans in order include California, New York, and Texas. And in Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders, we're seeing a um, significant increase of Tongans and Samoans in the state of Utah. Next slide. Asian Americans and Native Hawaiians in the U.S. are extremely, extremely diverse. And it's important to understand that before we begin the conversation around cancer disparities. Um, we can see we have about 30 um, distinct Asian ethnic and cultural groups, and about 60% of Asians in the U.S. are foreign-born. This is from the U.S. Um, Census Bureau. We have about 50 distinct NHPI alone, NHPI ethnic and cultural groups. About 12% of NHPIs in, US, in the U.S. are foreign-born. And there are over 2,000 distinct Asian Pacific Islander languages and over 100 um, languages and dialects are commonly spoken in the country. Next slide. We can see the rates in cancer incidence among Asian Pacific Islanders. Um, generally across the board, rates um, tend to be higher in men than women. Um, and we can see in Asian Pacific Islander, we're at a slightly over 330. And the rate for women is slightly over 275. Next slide. We can see the um, cancer mortality rates um, uh, are shown here at 134 for men and 94, slightly over 94 for women. Um, we'll discuss later, um, we can see that though mortality rates may be um, slow, excuse me, may be uh, slightly decreased, we can see that there's significant disparities when we dis disaggregate the data. Next slide. There are significant impacts of cancer on Asian Americans and Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders. Um, compared to um, compared to whites, um, AA and NHPI men are twice as likely to have stomach cancer. We look at women, um, AA and NHPI women, and they are almost 
three times as likely to have stomach cancer. Um, AA and HPI men are 40% likely to have prostate cancer as white men, but prostate, uh, however, prostate cancer is one of the top cancers for AA and HPI men. Clearly a disparity that needs to be addressed or and also looked at. Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander women are 30% less likely to have breast cancer um, as compared to white women, but breast cancer is still, again, the top cancer for um, Asian American and Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander women. Now, next slide, please. Taking a look at the Massachusetts minority Asian population is really critical so we can build our understanding. We look at the, um, at the uh, Massachusetts population. Currently, we have about 5%, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, that are Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander. Um, in that group, um, the top three Asian groups in Massachusetts are Chinese, followed by Asian Indian, and followed by Vietnamese. Um, important to note that most Asians live in Middlesex, Middlesex County in Massachusetts, while many Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders reside in Worcester County. Next slide. And if we look, um, and if we look at the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander population in Massachusetts specifically, we can see that there is a decrease or a, a, a decrease in change in 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 the group in in Massachusetts from the 2000 to 2006 um, census. We can see through the American Community Survey that there is a a percent change of decrease in um, Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander population communities in Massachusetts. Next. To further build our understanding of what the Asian American Native Hawaiian communities look like in Massachusetts, we want to also capture the education and income of these groups. Um, we can see through the educational attainment that 55% of Asian Americans in Massachusetts hold bachelor degrees or higher um, as compared to 37% um, of Massachusetts residents, but a uh, significantly decrease um, among Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders at 30 percent. We can see the majority of NHPIs are high school graduates, and we can see an income that um, Asian Americans in um, Massachusetts are at um, the medium for family income are over 70,000 and significantly less for Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders are nearly at 25,000. I, I think it's important to note that we see this um, significant drop among Asian Americans and Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders in terms of family medium income. This is not exclusive for Massachusetts. We see this across other data sets in other states as well. Next slide. And um, we're here. Here we um, are highlighting the um, cancer incident rates for the top ten cancers um, for men in Massachusetts. The top three for men in Massachusetts are prostate, followed by lung and bronchus, and followed by colorectal. However, if you look at um, at um, ethnic data uh, specific to Massachusetts, we can see that Asian Pacific Islanders. Similarly, are the highest for men are prostate, followed by lung and cancer, and followed by colorectal at almost 36, uh, 36 at a rate of 36. Well, uh, next slide, please. If we look at mortality rates for the Massachusetts general population, we can see that the top three um, cancers are lung and bronchus, followed by prostate, followed by colorectal. However, if you look at this among Asian Pacific Islander men, mortality rates it's slightly different. We can see that lung and um, bronchus are still leading, but liver um, and bile ducts are um, following as a as a leading um, as a leading killer of cancer among men, Asian men in um, Massachusetts. Next slide, please. Now, looking at women, we can see that cancer incident rates for the top ten sites. Um, among women in the general population of Massachusetts are female breast, lung, and followed by colorectal. If we look at the um, Asian Pacific Islander um, communities in Massachusetts, women, um, are, uh, in terms of female breast, it's leading, 
followed by colorectal and followed by thyroid, which is different from the from the general population. Next slide. If we see uh, uh, cancer mortality rates, uh, the top 10 for women are lung and bronchus, followed by female breast, followed by colorectal. This is again for a general uh, population of female in Massachusetts. And we can see from, uh, from uh, data from the U.S. Cancer Statistics, we can see that Asian and Pacific Islanders, in terms of uh, mortality rates in women, lung um, and bronchus is what we see, what we have data for. Next slide, please. And I hope, um, lastly, um, I, I, what I wanted to capture here briefly, um, and being my full uh, time with the our other colleagues, is that well, something can be done with the information that we know in terms of um, in terms of disparities and what's happening in terms of Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islanders in Massachusetts, but also throughout the country. We need to continue successful outreach. What we've known from our um, National Cancer Survivors Network um, that Trish highlighted is that we need to continue having successful outreach matched matched with closely with advocacy, in addition, research activities so we can build our understanding of what is happening um, in um, Asian American, Native Hawaiian, um, Pacific Islander in terms of inequities. Um, also, it's really, really important and something that the health form has advocated for as well, um, as well as um, my peers that will be speaking, is the value of disaggregated data. It is important to note that um, how data collected and reported in the API aggregate are virtually meaningless. Aggregate data obscures the cancer reality. It's really important that we break up the data so we can build our understanding. Um, in addition, we need to begin and end with community. We need to address language access. As we mentioned, there is complete diversity in the Asian American Native Hawaiian communities, and it's important to address the language access issue. We need to be culturally um, sensitive and compassionate. We need to engage in partnerships and collaboration, and as my peers will mention, um, uh, really highlight the, the, the value of partnership. Um, in addition, we need to inclu um, include and prioritize community-based participatory research so we can partner with communities closely. And we need to be very, very responsive and accountable to all of the Asian American, Native, Hawaiian, Pacific Islanders that we serve. And I hope that, that um, we provided just a glimpse um, of highlight of what's happening nationally and in Massachusetts. I'll hand it over um, back to Trish. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pedro, for sharing all of that um, wonderful information. Again, if folks would like a copy of the slides um, for any of that data that we shared, please um, type in your email address on the questions um, pane. So with um, that said, I would like to turn it over now to Chen Shi Huang, who is the Executive Director at the Asian Breast Cancer Project and also our National Advisory Council member for the Asian and Pacific Islander National Cancer Survivors Network. Chen Shi? Thank you, Trish. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Chen Shi Huang. I'm the Director of Asian Breast Cancer Project based in Boston, Massachusetts. We're a peer-led community-based program aimed to address the breast health uh, uh, disparity in the Asian American community through education and empowerment of Asian American women. Next, please. I will start my presentation with an overview of ABC project, followed by highlighting two other uh, Asian survivors groups in Massachusetts and then uh, we'll discuss a few lessons learned from running my program. Thanks. I was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 40. It was shocking to me because I thought breast cancer could only happen to elderly or white women. I feel very alone and isolated and I wanted to connect with other Asian cancer patients. Next, please. Next slide, please. Later, I learned that many Asian women I know had breast cancer, but nobody talked about it. This code of silence prevents many Asian women from seeking and receiving the support and information they need to beat this disease. 
I was very depressed for a long time after my treatment. And finally, what got me out of the deep, dark hole was when I decided to use my personal experience to help others. Next slide, please. With the support of Coleman, Massachusetts, and a few other funders, I started the ABC project in 2010 to provide peer-led breast health education and support for Asian women. Next, please. Next slide, please. We had a kickoff event in Quincy, which has an Asian population of over 20%. The mayor came and proclaimed the day as Asian Breast Cancer Awareness Day, and we earned major, um, uh, media exposure in three major Chinese newspapers. Next, please. Next slide, please. At the time, I could not find any evidence-based intervention prevention program for the Asian population. So I adapted our program based on the White, uh, Witness Project, a program developed for the African-American population. We established a network of Asian-American cancer survivors and hold meetings on the second Saturday morning every month. And this picture was taken after we had our first uh, meeting, and we did a storytelling workshop for the survivors. Next slide, please. In the first year, we trained 12 bilingual Asian American women to deliver breast health educational workshop in Mandarin, Cantonese, and Vietnamese. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. We work with 15 agencies and conducted 10 community workshops for over 250 people. Next slide, please. Next slide, yeah. Oh. We, had, uh, we also did a cultural awareness workshop for 23 service providers to help improve their communications with Asian patients on breast health issues. As part of the training, we feature a panel of Asian women to talk about how one's cultural and health beliefs can impact their behavior and attitude towards screening and treatment. Next, please. There are two other Asian survivors groups in Massachusetts. One is Tea Time at Beth Israel Hospital, and it is facilitated by Christine Ho, a Chinese patient navigator. The other one is a women's cancer support group at the Boston Chinese Evangelical Church in Chinatown. And it is facilitated by Pastor Dora Lam. Those groups run their meetings in Cantonese, and they provide survivors and cancer patients a venue to socialize and support each other. Next, please. Next slide, please. Because ABC Project has a pan-Asian approach, we usually run our meetings in English. Our attendance varies depending on people's health conditions and priorities in life. <clears throat> For example, people with children have a harder time coming to the meeting on a regular basis. And although our funding provides some resources for meetings and trainings, it is difficult to work through a fiscal agent, uh, especially when there is a leadership change within the hosting organization. Next slide, please. In April 2012, we received scholarships to send three of our members to attend the Global Chinese Breast Cancer Organizations Alliance Conference in Los Angeles. We recently trained 16 Asian women to conduct home visits for underserved Asian women by using an in-language breast health educational DVD. Our goal is to continue empowering and engaging Asian women in the field of health education. And the reason we changed our approach from a public educational workshop to the home visit is because last year we found out that most of the women who came to our public educational workshop are in the system, and most of them had the baseline uh, knowledge of uh, mammogram or breast health. So this year we're uh, modifying our approach. Uh, based on the research that we that we uh, and the evaluation we received last year, so we're doing more on a tailored one-on-one um, -on -one approach. Next slide, please. We will also build our brand uh, equity 
by creating and disseminating products and materials that bear our logo. Uh, we are beginning to gain some recognition in the community, in the Asian community. And we will continue to look for innovative ways to raise the awareness of breast health in the community. For example, we plan to do two flash mob fundraisers at the August Moon Festivals to generate awareness and destigmatize breast cancer. Next slide, please. Our long-term goal is to build the infrastructure to sustain our work and create a network of Asian women leaders. We're in the process of starting a not-for-profit organization to expand our programs and advance Asian women's well-being through education, research, and advocacy. Next slide. Lesson learned. We can achieve a lot by leveraging resources with affinity groups and learning from each other. Last year, we had a joint event with Pink and Black, the African American Breast Cancer Survivors Group, to learn how to perform breast self exam and teach others to do so. We also benefited from talking with other Asian breast cancer survivor group in LA, New York, and Houston. It is important to align with an institution. We're in partnership with Tufts Medical Center, and we tap into its network and expertise on research and curriculum development. We plan to develop a training program similar to Reach to Recovery, so survivors can pay visit to newly diagnosed patients and provide social and emotional support. Uh, to, um, to broaden our reach, uh, outreach and generate awareness, we participate in many events and health fairs. We always send invitations to ASME Media to cover our events. And our survivors have direct inputs on what type of programming they want to have. And we offer skill-based workshops such as public speaking and self-care. And the most popular topics are usually diet and nutrition. Next slide, please. I'd like to end my presentation by telling you about the daffodil principle. It is a very moving story about a woman who single-handedly planted 50,000 daffodils in the span of 50 years. You can Google the story online. and. Um, just like the story said, when we multiply tiny pieces of time with small increments of daily efforts, we too will find we can accomplish magnificent things. We can change the world. Thank you for your attention, and please don't forget to check out our Facebook page and like us. Thank you so much, Chin Chi, um, for that wonderful presentation. Um, each of the Panelists have their contact information on their presentation, so make sure to take note of that if you have additional questions for them. But we are still um, um, collecting questions um, for, uh, from participants today. So our next presenter is um, Linda Brantley, who oh, Linda Brantley, who is the president for the New England Coalition for Cancer Survivorship. Linda, you may begin at any time. Hi, good afternoon, and thank you uh, for including NECCF in this important webinar. We appreciate the opportunity to speak to your audience today. Um, we have been in existence since 1995, and we exist to be the voice of survivorship um, throughout New England. Survivorship um, is our niche, and we are inclusive of all cancers. Um, and we're primarily made up of actual cancer survivors and caretakers ourselves. Um, next slide, please. Our mission is to educate, advocate, and empower on behalf of cancer survivors throughout New England. Um, and we do this in a variety of ways, which I can go over with you on the next slide. Um, basically, uh, we accomplish our mission by um, serving uh, and advocating on behalf of those touched with cancers. We um, have a strong legislative and public policy advocacy component to our work. We're currently 
um, monitoring very closely two bills in Massachusetts, the um, medical marijuana bill and the oral chemo parity bill. Uh, we also provide community programs. We try to link um, cancer survivors and caregivers and family members to resources and make referrals um, when people um, approach us with um, needs. And we educate the public about cancer survivorship and the needs of cancer survivors. We have tip sheets and publications and a speaker's bureau. We have a lot of resources on our website that I hope people will check out if they um, need to. And we also do outreach activities, which is actually why how we came into contact with um, Chen Chi and her work. And it's, a, it's an amazing um, partnership we're growing because we need to be better educated about the needs of various um, uh, subsets of cancer survivors. So we look forward to working with um, the Asian Breast Cancer Project in the future to learn more about the needs of those survivors. And we're actually um, this year going to be conducting a um, comprehensive uh, cancer survivorship uh, audit and survey, a needs assessment, because we feel that we need to have a better uh, picture of what, what really survivors need and what their priorities are. And that will help to shape our work going forward. Um, next slide, please. Um, I mentioned that we do legislative and public policy advocacy. Um, these are just some of the organizations that we work with. Again, um, we feel that it's important to be that voice of cancer survivorship and work on behalf of what uh, survivors need, particularly at the high level of you know, uh, making law and uh, shaping public policy. Next slide, please. We work in partnership quite a bit because um, you know, I think a lot of our organizations are strapped for uh, fiscal and human resources. Um, one of our key partnerships is we're very fortunate to be one of four organizations that benefit from the uh, Conquer Cancer License Plate in Massachusetts, uh, which is a wonderful program. And you have contact information there. Next slide, please. We're also proud to um, be involved with the Mass Comprehensive Cancer Control Coalition. Many of our board members um, uh, sit on various work groups for this. If you are not familiar with this report that was just um, released in the last couple of months, I um, encourage you to check it out. Um, next slide, please. Um, and I just wanted to share with you a couple of the pertinent findings that I thought would be of interest to this audience, in particular in today's topic. And uh, Pedro did cover a lot of this, so I'm going to kind of move through this kind of quickly. Um, just again to um, reinforce the incidence of cancer in Massachusetts, about 36,000 uh, are diagnosed each year. And um, breast cancer is, is a big uh, new cancer, 20%, 28% of all new cancer cases in this group. Um, next slide, please. Um, the plan um, breaks out specific goals and then uh, creates uh, specific strategies to meet those goals. And again, of interest to today's audience, I thought I would just make you aware that um, there are goals within this plan that I think that all um, cancer survivorship communities can um, engage with and work towards. Um, there's a lot of uh, shared goals here and a lot of shared work we can do together. For instance, they note uh, disparities in health equity, the need for advocacy and community engagement. Next, please. Um, they talk about the need for better preventative um, measures and also the importance of early detection and screening. Um, next, please. Um, of, of prime interest to us at NECCS is survivorship and treatment and their um, desire to see that really uh, the overall experience and quality of life of all residents of the Commonwealth are improved. Um, next slide, please. Specifically, as I mentioned, they've set out strategies for each of these objectives. And this is where I think that all of us in Massachusetts and New England um, should really work together collaboratively, because there are so many things here that we all care about and we all want and that we can all plug into and work um, uh, in concert on. 
um, specifically around disparities. Uh, documentation, you know, we need to do better documentation of where the disparities are and where the health inequities are, which is something that we hope that our um, survey will uh, bubble up for us. Need to identify the gaps. Um, where are the gaps? Where are the cultural gaps, the ethnicity gaps, the geographic gaps, et cetera? Next slide, please. Um, because the good news is, is that um, cancer survivorship is on the rise. Their, um, the number of cancer survivors has more than tripled in the past 34 years. So there are more of us out here, um, and we have emerging needs. Um, and those needs are becoming more and more um, important. And the need to make um, physicians and practitioners and caregivers aware of those needs and work with them on how to address those needs is of um, infinite importance. Um, next, please. So this objective speaks right to um, cancer survivorships and the need to collaborate with hospitals to disseminate survivorship information and resources and to collaborate with other New England states on common approaches. I think we had, um, Linda, I think we just lost you um, on your audio. Um, if you can um, try dialing in again. Um, and then for all our participants, as we wait for Linda to reconnect, um, we are getting questions. So I am encouraging everybody to continue um, typing in your questions. We have a, an amazing group of speakers today, so I encourage you to make use of um, their expertise and their information um, and what they can provide. We do have one more speaker today who will be presenting on her organization and a, a, a very informative conference that's happening um, in, uh, um, soon. Um, and also, for those asking about copies for the presentation, we will be providing um, copies. Um, just please type in your email address on the questions pane at the very bottom of your control panel, and we will make sure to send you a copy of the slides. Um, uh, the, this webinar is also being recorded live. So uh, we will be sharing the link to this webinar um, uh, in a follow-up email that will be coming from um, me and from the Health Forum. Um, I think we're still waiting to hear from Linda. Linda, are you on? If not, um, Linda, I will um, return. Um, I'll get back to you, but for now, I think we uh, I'll get back to you and sh so you can share information on your um, uh, the awards um, luncheon. But for now, I would like to hand it over to our next speaker, who um, Pauline Alighieri from the uh, who is the executive director from the Friends of Mel Foundation. Pauline, you may begin at any time. Hello, and um, thank you for inviting the Friends of Mel Foundation to participate in this webinar today. We feel really honored. Uh, next, please. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Friends of Mel Foundation and how we came to be. Um, in 2005, a small group of women came together with the idea to raise $5,000 in memory of their dear friend, Mel Simmons. With an average donation of $20 and Mel's bracelet as a simple token of appreciation, Friends of Mel has been able to grow into an international community of women who have united to make a difference in the cancer world. Today we have gifted nearly $3 million to programs and organizations that work diligently to support those whose lives have been touched by cancer. Next, please. My friend Mel Simmons, who was a, Del excuse me, a flight attendant for Delta Airlines, was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2000. To cheer her up during her treatment, other flight attendants would bring her trinkets from their international travels, lacquered pins from Russia, olive oil soap from Nice, and colorful beaded bracelets from Istanbul. Mel loved to give these treats 
to the nursing staff and other cancer patients at Mass General Hospital. When she lost her battle to breast cancer in 2005, people who had bracelets wore them in her honor. Many wanted to buy them for gifts. An idea was formed. Within a year, the Friends of Mel Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit organization, was formed, and we were able to donate $1 million to Mass General Hospital for cancer research. You can learn more about Mel's story by visiting Friends of Mel, Hometown Heroes, at YouTube. Next, please. Since our formation, we have learned a lot from patients and caregivers who are navigating the cancer journey. At the same time, we have learned that the number of Americans who have had a diagnosis of cancer are living. The numbers continue to increase, and many people are living a long time after diagnosis. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the National Cancer Institute indicated that the number of cancer survivors increased by about 20% in just six years to 11.7 million in 2007 the latest year for which figures were analyzed, from 9.8 million in 2001. Just to give you an idea of how far we've come, in 1971, the number of cancer survivors was 3 million. According to Dr. Thomas Frieden, director of the Centers for Disease Control, there is still a concept that cancer is a death sentence. But for many people with cancer, it's important for them and their families and caregivers to recognize that this is a stage. He believes that many can live a long and healthy life. In 2011, the New York Times reported 65% of cancer survivors have lived at least five years since their diagnosis, 40% have lived 10 years or more, and 10% have survived for 25 years. Next, please. This is such promising news. The American Cancer Society estimates that there will be 18 million cancer survivors living in the United States by the year 2022. That's an increase of nearly 5 million in 10 years. The increase in survivors is primarily due to aging and population growth, and certainly better treatment and higher rates of early detection at more curable stages. So that means more people are living with a previous cancer diagnosis. Next please. As I mentioned earlier, we've learned a lot from patients and caregivers. To help survivors, the Friends of Mel Foundation is hosting our second conference for survivors and caregivers, where attendees can learn much through presentation for ex from experts on cancer and workshops designed to offer tools that will help survivors enjoy a healthier, happier life. For example, how can you keep as healthy as possible? Dr. Frieden says some people might think since they've had cancer, they don't have to worry about eating right, quitting smoking or exercising. But people with cancer need to be just as concerned about heart disease and other risks that they would otherwise that they would face otherwise. How can you handle the roller coaster of emotions you continue to feel? Managing the ups and downs of, emo of the emotional aftermath of cancer is an important skill to develop in the quest for well being. At the conference, attendees can learn how to manage the new collage of emotions they feel so they can live a full and more authentic life. Next, please. Here are some of the many other topics that will be addressed. Healing, financial concerns, developing mind and body skills, sexual intimacy, nutrition and fitness, genetic testing, and the after effects of chemo and how to reevaluate and energize your life. Additional workshops have been created specifically for the young adult community, couples, and caregivers. To learn more about the workshops offered at the Art of Living Life Beyond Cancer Conference, visit our website at friendsofmel.org. Next, please. The number one distress identified among cancer survivors is the ability to function the way they have pre-cancer. Studies show that physical therapy is an effective, non-medication solution for the side effects associated with cancer treatment. In an effort to help survivors increase strength and energy, alleviate pain, and improve daily function after treatment, such as mastectomy, 
The Friends of Mel Foundation is underwriting an initiative in Massachusetts that provides training for rehabilitation professionals to meet the specific needs of patients suffering from the remnants of cancer. The goal is to restore survivors to a more normal state. With the increasing number of cancer survivors and more attention being brought to quality of life issues, the American College of Surgeons Commission on Cancer, CLC, is requiring that the more than 1,500 cancer programs in the United States and Puerto Rico offer rehabilitation services. The overall goal is to help cancer survivors live their lives to the fullest. Next, please. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to tell our story. We just launched a brand new website yesterday. We invite you to visit and learn more about the Friends of Mel Foundation. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Colleen, for sharing that information. Um, we just have Linda join us again. Um, I want to give her a couple minutes just to share um, information about her, um, the awards mentioned. Linda, you may um, speak at any time. Thank you, Trish. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened with my phone. Um, yes, I thought this was going to be a nice lead into Pauline's um, talk about the conference, but whatever. Um, one way that we celebrate um, we celebrate and empower and um, create a community of cancer survivors that is through our annual awards recognition luncheon. And that is going to be held this uh, November 3rd this year. And we, uh, we are in an ongoing process of accepting applications for um, a variety of awards, um, some of which are listed here. And the full list can be found on our website. So if anyone here is in the New England area, and would like to recognize a survivor or a caregiver or a healthcare professional, um, we would love to receive your nominations. Um, so if you want to go to the next slide, um, please, Trish. Uh, again, the event is November 3rd. The nomination deadline is September 21st. And um, we do have a website that is listed there. Um, lots of resources there. We also have a Facebook page and Twitter page, and um, we would love to have you come um, and, as Chinchi said, uh, like us and connect with us uh, via that. And again, thank you for the opportunity to be with you today. Thank you so much, Pauline. Um, right now, we are taking questions from participants. We still have um, some time for Q&A. Um, I will go ahead and read um, some of the questions that were sent to us, and um, any of the panelists can um, choose to answer. The first question is for, I think, for Pauline. Um, how can out-of-state participants get information provided at your conference? All of the information about our conference is on our website. There's a brochure and a list of all the workshops that, um, that we're offering. Um, and you can also call our office, 781-740-2511, if we can assist you in any way. And our next, thank you, Pauline. Our next question is, um, the uh, Chinchi had talked about starting a support service like Reach to Recovery. Um, has there been any um, outreach to connect with the American Cancer Society as ACS already has all the training and referral networks in place? Uh, yes, we, we have uh, contacted the uh, American Cancer Society Reach to Recovery um, program, but unfortunately every time when they have the training, it doesn't, it didn't work out with our schedule. So we're in the process of developing uh, our own uh, curriculum uh, in partnership with the top medical center to do this training for the Asian cancer survivors. Um, perhaps also, thank you, Chen Shiva, perhaps also the asker, um, if you are available, I could perhaps connect you with um, Chin Chi after the webinar. 
Um, the next question is, um, I am a cancer survivor. What do I have to consider when reaching out or recruiting other cancer survivors? And um, what is it important to learn about being an uh, advocate? And anyone can um, choose to answer. Well, for what it's worth, uh, this is Colleen. Uh, for what it's worth, we will have a workshop at our conference on September 15th that is uh, designed specifically for advocacy. So if this person lives uh, nearby, we invite you to join us and learn more about uh, how you can get involved. Uh, thank you, Pauline. Uh, oh, go ahead, Chin Chi. Oh, uh, this is Chin Chi. So um, when, when I first started, I just, you know, reach out to organizations and to, to media and to tell them about what I would hope to do and, you know, what my story is. And I think that because of that, I got responses from other cancer survivors. So, um, you know, I think this is how I, how I get started. So hope this is helpful. Um, also, for those who are looking to begin, um, start their own cancer support group, um, um, that are ethnic, you know, specific or based uh, community specific, just please connect with us at, here at the Health Forum, become a member of the Cancer Survivors Network. We have, we had a, a program before where we had a cancer support group mentorship program and we've connected sort of in a, um, a big brother, um, little sister sort of role connecting, um, you know, a Chinese cancer support group in Georgia to um, another Chinese cancer support group that wanted to start here in um, the Bay Area. So we have that sort of mentorship program and people can email me or join um, the network for more information. Um, our next um, question is, um, do any of you know um, if what translator services have been pushed um, for in Massachusetts, much like the successful translation program in California? I think this is in terms of um, Asian and Pacific Islander languages. Uh, this is Chen Chi. Um, I personally, I, I'm, you know, because most of the time I'm working with the grassroots, um, you know, level. So I don't really know, and I, I would like to learn more how that works and how to navigate the the system to advocate for and and to push for uh, interpretation translation services. Um, another question that we have is, um, I am interested in evidence-based programs for cancer survivorship. Um, are there programs that are, um, um, I guess, ready and are already scripted to begin to implement in the community? Do people know, uh, have resources that, yeah. Yes, uh, this is Chen Chi. So uh, there is a resource that you can you can use. Uh, you can go online and search for Planet Mass Connect. Uh, it's it's spelled uh, M A S S C O N E C T, and it's a website. It's a portal put out by the Institute for Community Health Program Planning, and then it's um, you can go in there. It's free. And you can do a search by uh, different cancers uh, or by uh, community, like different populations. And these are, they have a collection of all the evidence-based uh, prevention intervention programs. It was very, very useful for me when I, when I first started the ABC program. Thank you so much, Shinshi, and I will make sure to connect you um, also with uh, the asker of the question. So that's all we have for um, q and I'd just like to make a few announcements of what um, participants have shared. Um, for those who want to access the Massachusetts Cancer State Plan, it is available on www.macompcancer.org. And um, regarding the 
reach to recovery. Um, the reach to recovery training is going to move online in 2013, so maybe it might be easier to schedule trainings. And I will connect um, the that person to um, Chin Chi through. So, um, uh, oh, oh, go oh, ahead. Can I just mention one more thing? So, uh, Asian Breast Cancer Project also developed a fact sheet on some of the stats of um, breast health. Uh, in the Asian and Pacific Islander community. So I'll be happy to send a copy to you and you, if you can disseminate it. Okay. I will do it. Thank you. Um, Thank there are you. also, um, the, the, for the data that Pedro had shared, we have cancers, um, um, we have state fact sheets for um, different states on cancer and demographics, and it's available on our website, www. APIAHF.org, and um, there are also cancer resources that are available if you go to the Chronic Diseases Program um, page. So this webinar, again, has been recorded for your future reference and will be available for viewing at our YouTube page, www.youtube.com slash APIAHF, um, within next week. Um, and I would also like to encourage you to continue staying connected with us. Um, learn more about you know, fellow advocates and survivors by liking our Facebook page. And you can also subscribe to our API Cancer Listserv and receive information on upcoming events, um, similar webinars, information on cancer resources and um, advocacy and policy information, uh, funding and research opportunities, and send a blank email to apicancer-subscribe at yahoogroups.com. Finally, um, please join our network. We need um, in, uh, people like you to um, continue pushing forward with our policies and um, engaging in the dialogue on cancer screening prevention and um, survivorship. So please um, visit our website, um, and the link is um, there at the very top. Um, and you can see a screenshot of that page. And finally, you will also be receiving a short survey from us when this webinar ends. Your feedback is very important to us. And as we continue to um, conduct our program and our service, it only takes a couple of minutes. So we appreciate your responses. And you will receive that um, from a follow-up email after this webinar. So um, with that said, um, thank you so much to the Asian Breast Cancer Project, New England Coalition for Cancer Survivorship, the Friends of Mel Foundation, everyone for joining us today. Um, we really look forward to staying connected with you. You have all of our resources, and my contact information is there if you have additional questions. And we hope you can participate in future webinars hosted by the Health Forum and the Cancer Survivors Network. Um, our next webinar is on social media as a communications and public health strategy. So we will send information to you um, about that too. So with that said, um, thank you again so much, everybody. And thank you to our wonderful speakers. Um, this webinar is now adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.